um, a little update. So, obviously, most of you would know Joe Rogan and Brian Cannon were really good friends for a long, long time, right? Um, they'd be, Brian Cannon would be on the show a lot of the time. Joe Rogan always talk about how Brian Cannon was his best friend because they knew each other when they were really young. There's an iconic picture of Joe Rogan and Brian Cannon in the back of some taxi looking really old and looking really young at the same time. And they've had a long relationship in LA and whatever, maybe, whatever else, right? In LA and entertainment industry doing their thing. Then, of course, Brian gets accused of rape. And as soon as he gets accused of rape, it felt like Mr. Anti-Cancel Culture, Mr. Anti-Censorship, in terms of Joe Rogan, went completely um, silent and, you know, basically pretended like Brian Cannon didn't exist throughout the entire ordeal. Never mentioned his name, never once. Um, and again, no one's saying he should be standing up for him and fighting his battles, but for somebody who's so vocal about talking about other people's um, cancellation issues and talking about the you know anti-cancel culture thing, talking about censorship, maybe talking about how um, you know people shouldn't be getting caught judged and in you know in a court of public opinion and losing their career for something they said or something they might have done, blah de blah blah blah. It was very surprising for me that he didn't make any effort to stand up for Brian Kelly, considering they're actually friends. From what it looks like, again, I don't know the behind the scenes, but they look, they seem like they were friends. And it clearly, I would assume, if you're Brian Cannon and your friend happened to be one of the biggest podcasters in the world and he just refuses to mention you or maybe he's not replying back to your text messages, it would maybe hurt my feelings because your career's already done. But then you would imagine, you'd hope that at least your friends who have the ability and the means to maybe help you get your career back could try to help you, but they don't. Because obviously they've got to protect their own, you know, their own back. And I think also, to be honest, my theory is that Joe Rogan was possibly negotiating the Spotify deal around the same time Brian Callum was getting cancelled. And clearly that kind of money, Spotify money, was too good to turn down because he took the deal in the first place. Because I didn't I was I was surprised he even had an exclusivity deal with the streaming platform. I would just assume Joe Rogan would have clearly would have kept doing what he was doing from, from before f until the end of time. Because it was at the time I think the last time I read the report, they said that he was making anywhere between like thirty to fifty million per year off the podcast alone, doing it the way he was doing it before, uploading it onto YouTube, um, and having it on all the streaming platforms. He was already making thirty to fifty million. Then as soon as the inter negotiations with Spotify and that deal got announced, it was like anything between a hundred million to three hundred million for only a three year licensing deal, which is absolutely insane. Joe can fucking smash it. That's a deal of the century to license your podcast for only three years and get 300 M's, bravo. But I think that was a bad luck for Brian because that meant that he couldn't stand up for him because he didn't want to jeopardize a deal and get any bad press and blah, 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 blah. But it's also funny that in the wake of everything happening and Brian Cullen basically getting his career back, kind of in terms of going back on podcasting, but, you know, the Hollywood stuff is done. Because, you know, it is done. Like I said before, if Army Hammer can get cancelled and he's a stud and he can get cancelled for, you know, imaginary cannibalism, this guy getting a kiss of rape, it's not going to happen anymore. So the Hollywood career is done. But at least he's got the podcast. He's got a means to feed his family. But still, even with that being said, you don't really see Brian Callan on the podcast anymore. I Because I'm assuming it's an elephant in the room, isn't it? Like, you have to talk about this. You know, you went through a flipping rape allegation thing. Like, you have to speak about this shit. And obviously, Joe just doesn't want that smoke on his podcast anymore. Um, but they still talk about him a lot. They still mention Joe Rogan's name and they make it seem like they're all still close, but they're not. You know they're not close anymore. And I thought this video clip that Brian Callen uploaded on his Instagram thing was quite bittersweet because clearly they don't talk as much as they did in the past. Clearly they're not as close as they were in the past and clearly things have changed. But they're just trying to, you know, it's the entertainment industry. You gotta just play these games and pretend like you're still friends and stuff. But it's a little bit sad. I gotta be honest, it's a little bit sad. Yeah. Just put the phone. Is that the folks out there in the world? See, my, my dear friend, we haven't had we haven't had a meal in two and a half years or something. Bro, the yeah. pandemic fucked us all up. I know. But you and know how to move. You still look so fucking young. Right now, thinking about moving. The pandemic, they said, huh? Sure. Moving to Texas, right? Yeah. That's right. Ooh, That's right. Look at this place. <laughs> Cap cities. Come to a set. Hey, no filter. Look, you can see my lips. Oh, brutal. Come do a set. What did you say? Look, I moved my hand. That's an inside joke. Look, that's an inside joke. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was that was a bit embarrassing. That was a bit cringe, isn't it? That was a bit sad. That was a bit cringe. Again, maybe I'm reading too much into it. I know someone's going to blame me on the comments. You're reading too much into it. You don't have a life. Get your own friends. No, I don't want my own friends. I want imaginary ones. I want to live my life vicariously through these guys' issues. I have no friends. This is why I'm on this stream at 3.40 a.m. here in London time doing what I'm doing. So when you guys insult me and say, you have no friends, why are you doing this stuff? Well, duh, this is why I'm doing it. <laughs> you have no friends. Of course I have no friends. That's why I'm fucking here. <laughs> you think if I had a healthy family and friendship life that I'd be here? <laughs> of course I wouldn't. I'd be hanging out with my family and friends, but I don't have any, so I'm here with you guys. My e-family and friends. <laughs> but yeah, um... That was that was hilarious. Did you catch that bit where he said, "Oh, um, come to a set"? And the funny thing about this, right? The funny thing about this, come to a set thing. I can't find it because I don't want to search around. But there was a couple episodes ago on the fire and the kid. Um, Brian Callen and Brenda were talking, and Brian was basically uh, hinting that when he goes to do a show at Austin, he might have Joe Rogan come out and do a set. Like, oh, some guy might be there who's got a big podcast. He might do a set. Uh, you might know him. His name rhymes with Toe Rogan, whatever it may be, right? And <laughs> and clearly that didn't happen because Joe didn't do the set, right? He just didn't do it. So scheduling issue, I'm not sure what happened, but it's just I just find it funny that these guys talk a big game about others, they have a lot to say when everyone else goes through their personal issue, but then when something happens to their friends, it seems like they abandon them the same way everyone else abandons them. You know, when you get into an issue, the streaming platforms ditch you, you, you get you get your shows cancelled and all that stuff, right? Um, And this is the same thing their friends do to them. Because in public, you know, they don't stand next to them, they don't support them, they don't support them on their shows, they kind of pretend they don't exist. It's the same thing that the the, the kind of uh, mainstream media does. It's exactly the same thing. So when they talk all that big stuff about being anti cancel culture and being anti censorship, it's just it's just lip service, just words for the sake of it. But I did find it quite sad and embarrassing for Brian because clearly this relationship has changed. And again, you know, off the other side of the rape allegation, Joe Rogan's a completely different person now. He's a completely different level of caliber of podcaster. He's essentially a de facto. Um, what would you say? New source for some people. He's become essentially the institution in some way, shape, or form. He's at the barometer of success. If you go on Rogan, you've made it kind of thing. He's 300 M's richer. It's just a different relationship. So it's not the same thing as before. And of course, Brian Cannon has reputation accusation over his head. I understand if you're Rogan, you, you can't have that guy around you. It's not good for business. But it's just, it was just, you know, a part of me kind of cringe when he was like, come to a set. And then you know, randomly flipping Rogan heard that and didn't listen to it. It just kept on steaming through. It's just, oh, it's fucking brutal, man. It's fucking brutal. But hey, what can you do in it? I guess don't rape people. I guess isn't it. That's that's a lesson out there. Don't rape, or you might lose your friendship with your Rogan. <laughs> oh, anyway, let's continue here. What people are saying in the chat? Amy said, uh, "Boom destroyed, nuked. Maybe they're good to keep a secret hushes. They fuck up." Hmm. Yeah, maybe they do. I think some people have said that. Maybe I remember some people saying that, Amy. Some someone just said the other day. Someone said in a comment once, maybe the reason why Joe Rogan didn't talk about it is because he didn't want to bring more attention to it because he's got a big platform. Like, why should I talk about I should actually to help my friend is to not say anything because I don't want to bring more attention to it. Which I don't I think it's cap. Um but that that is an interesting theory. Maybe talk not talk about it and hope it goes away. But I just I'm just saying from my point of view, I've been listening to hours of these guys speak. They don't miss opportunity to talk about everybody else's counseling cancellations that aren't their friends. But the moment this happens to one of their friends, suddenly they get all scared. Do you know what I mean? Which is, you know, understandable, but you know, again, I can laugh at it. I'm allowed to laugh at it. Um let's continue. Do 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 see Phoenix saying, I distance myself from that weirdo drama too that they pull Rogan into and use his name and clout the the um clout um to threaten careers of comedians that leeches that's leeches for you. Yeah, okay, that's true. That's a good point. Maybe that's an insight into what happens behind the scene. Maybe the reason why Joe Rogan didn't want to get involved is because these guys speak about him when he's not around anyway, they use his name and kind of make him look bad anyway. So he just didn't want to get involved anymore because that Bobby Lee revelation was fucking incredible. That was crazy. When Bobby Lee revealed that Brian Callen, I think on the phone, was threatening him 
with Joe Rogan. Like he was basically saying, hey, stop spreading disinformation or about Brendan or stop talking shit about Brendan, whatever it may be, or stop, you know, commenting on a Reddit or I'm going to fuck up your career. And then he mentioned Joe Rogan's name as like a point of reference, like as a point of like, as like a threat. I'll tell Joe. It's like, what? I'll tell you, tell Joe what? That Brendan tried to fuck my wife. Like, is that what you're going to, and I got angry about it. Oh, my bad. My bad. I got upset that you tried to fuck my wife and I got pissed off. My bad. You know what I mean? Like, if those guys are doing that to Bobby Lee, imagine what they're doing to other people behind the scenes. So maybe that, that is a good point, actually, um, C Phoenix. That's a very, very good point. Maybe he knows, you know, like these guys, like they're fucking redacted anyway. I don't want to get involved in this nonsense. Keep me out of it. But a part of me, as much as I know, or as much as I believe most likely Brent Brian did do what he was accused of doing, a part of me can't help but feel sorry for him that, you know, his friends are just all abandoned him, like properly abandoned him. And they all knew who, what kind of person he was. Joe Rogan shared that story once already in his podcast where he set Brian Callen up with a friend of his, a female friend. And the female friend one day called him complaining that how she told Callen not to come in him, not to come in her, sorry. <laughs> and he did it anyway. And he was laughing about it on the podcast. I forgot what show it was. It's a fucking crazy story to hear him laughing and thinking that's a funny story. Like, oh, ha ha, Brian Callen's so crazy, man. This girl that I recommended him to, she said, don't come inside me. And he did come inside and said, oops, or something. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, these guys are absolute sickos, honestly. Complete sickos. 